Dear students, today we are going to discuss about treatment of periodontal abscess. I am Dr. T.B. Meenalochini, Senior Lecturer from the Department of Periodontology, Vinayaga Mission Sankracharya Dental College. Now, we are going to discuss about the classification of periodontal abscess, mainly gingival abscess, periodontal abscess, periapical abscess, pericoronal abscess, followed by their management. Before moving to periodontal abscess, we should know about the periodontium. Periodontium refers to the tissue that surrounds and supports the tooth structure. So, when there is a localized purulent inflammation of this periodontal tissues, it is called as periodontal abscess. Abscess is usually confined within the cavity and the formation of pus is called suppuration. Here we will be discussing mainly about the gingival abscess, periodontal abscess, periapical abscess and pericoronal abscess. First one is the gingival abscess. It is a localized purulent infection which is mainly confined within the interdental papilla and the marginal gingiva. The main etiology of gingival abscess may be any foreign substance like clock or food particles forced into the gingiva leading to acute inflammation. The clinical features of gingival abscess includes red, smooth, sometimes painful, often fluctuant swelling which is confined within the gingiva. Treatment of gingival abscess the main objective is to remove the cause. This can be achieved by scaling and root planing. Scaling and root planing can remove the microbial deposits and also helps in drainage of pus. In more acute situations, the lesion is incised at more fluctuant area using number 15 scalpel blade. The incision is gently widened to permit the drainage of pus. The area is irrigated and flushed out with saline. Antibiotics and analgesics can be prescribed if necessary. These pictures will give you a clear idea of scaling and root planing followed by drainage of abscess. What are the differences between periapical abscess and periodontal abscess? Periapical abscess is usually associated with deep caries and restoration. Abscess may be seen around the root apices. In periodontal abscess, it arises with periodontal pocket. It is usually seen around the periodontium. In periapical abscess, tooth often seems to be non-vital. In periodontal abscess, the tooth remains vital. In periapical abscess, the pain is not localized. Patient cannot localize the pain. In peri periodontal abscess, the pain is localized. In periapical abscess, the pain may be sharp, intermittent, throbbing, severe and diffuse. In periodontal abscess, the pain is usually dull, steady and continuous. In periapical abscess, the swelling is associated mostly with the sinus tract formation. In periodontal abscess, the swelling involves the gingival tissue and hence sinus and fistula are uncommon. In this picture, we can clearly appreciate the periapical abscess and sinus tract formation in the tooth 1-1. One one. Now coming to periodontal abscess. It is an infection often arises as an acute exacerbation of a pre-existing pocket. It results in the destruction of the periodontal ligament and alveolar bone. It is often seen associated in patients with untreated periodontitis with moderate and deep periodontal pockets. Here is the picture depicting periodontal abscess around 4 6. Clinical features include bluish red smooth shiny swelling which is fluctuant in nature with purulent exudates deep pockets and gingival recession may be present mobility and tooth extrusion is seen pain and tenderness to palpation are the common clinical features the tooth is usually vital following are the treatment options for periodontal abscess this includes drainage through pocket retraction or incision, drainage through an external incision, scaling and root planing, 
systemic antibiotics and finally if the tooth is hopeless it can be removed. Now let us discuss about the drainage through pocket retraction or incision. After anesthetizing the area the pocket wall is retracted using the curettes to initiate the drainage of pockets through the pocket entrance. Gentle digital pressure can be used to clear the pocket. What is the drainage using external incision? First the abscess is isolated using a sterile gauze. After this using number 15 scalpel blade a vertical incision is made on the most fluctuant area of the swelling. This incision is gently widened to allow the drainage of pus. After complete drainage of pus the area is irrigated using saline and it is left open to heal. After that antibiotics and analgesics can be prescribed. Moving on to pericoronal abscess. This results from the inflammation of the soft tissue operculum which covers a partially erupted tooth. This is most commonly observed around mandibular third molars. Clinical features of pericoronal abscess includes inflammation and pus discharge around the unerupted tooth. Pain may be mild to severe associated with regional lymphadenopathy and fever. Patients often complains of difficulty in complete opening of mouth. What are the treatment options for pericoronal abscess? After anesthetizing the area, gently lift the soft tissue operculum using periodontal probe or curette and the underlying debris may be removed by gentle irrigation with saline. Systemic antibiotics and analgesics can be prescribed for lymphadenopathy. The patient is dismissed with the instruction to rinse with warm saline water every 2 hours and the area is reassessed after 24 hours. Soft tissue operculum pointed out here has to be lifted using the periodontal curette and it has to be irrigated. Choice of antibiotics for the treatment of periodontal abscess. Amoxicillin is the drug of choice. 1 gram loading dose followed by 500 mg thrice a day for 3 days. Patients are re-evaluated after 3 days to determine the need for antibiotics. If the symptoms persist, the antibiotics can be continued. In case if the patient has penicillin allergy, then clindamycin is the drug of choice. 600 mg loading dose followed by 300 mg 4 times a day for 3 days. And azithromycin can also be used 1 gram loading dose followed by 500 mg once a day for 3 days. To conclude, periodontal abscess has the possibility to spread microorganisms resulting in serious infection. So, the abscess localization followed by drainage are the most important stages in the treatment of periodontal abscess.